Oh, okay. All right, that that's cool. That that changes things. Welcome to the secret video. Yeah, I did a secret video. How fun! I, how, I hope you have fun with it. Congratulations on finding it, by the way, if if you found it. It's very likely that I am going to make this public. Uh, who am I kidding? It's, it's gonna be public eventually. But anyways, this little extra bit of video happened because there was some stuff I wanted to talk about that I didn't think my main video was going to cover uh, without completely changing gears midway through, which, you know, not out of the question for me. Uh, but it wasn't necessary to finish the ideas of the main video. So let's turn it into a little addendum video and then have a little treasure hunt so that people can have fun with it. I hope you had fun with it. So this thing that you're watching right now happened when I was trying to get my thoughts in order for the game. There was something that I was confused about, and uh, so I actually started writing another script in, in the middle of the script that I was already writing. My big sticking point was how Inscription is a game that operates on all kinds of layers and builds all kinds of playgrounds for itself to mess around in and have fun. This much we know. But what Inscription does that sets it apart from Pony Island and the Hex is that it puts a character between the player and the game. That's backwards. Throughout my playing of the game, Luke's presence was the hardest part for me to parse. Up until now, Mullins' games have been really into addressing the player directly. Pony Island has us playing ostensibly ourselves. Being addressed by the denizens of the game, we are playing directly. The Hex is almost a documentary about a character within its fiction, creating said fiction as it exists while we are playing it. But Inscription so far was the exception. At no point did the game get past the Luke barrier, as I came to think of it. This doesn't seem like much of a big deal, but it is pretty obvious that there's supposed to be a connection between all of these games. Characters from the Hex show up in Inscription. Game Funa is a presence that appears in both of those games. Pony Island is less integrated at this point, but I'm not going to go into the connections that do exist because there's plenty out there that will outline all of the connections for you. And both Pony Island and the Hex were games that pull the player, as in us, directly into the structure of the game game. In the case of Pony Island, one of the endings of the game even makes a request of us directly to be carried out when the game ends. Inscription doesn't do this. Anytime one of the scribes or someone in the game looks into the camera and addresses the player, they are always talking to Luke, looking into a literal camera as it happens, and periodically the game reminds us that we are not in this. Luke is. All of our gameplay is watched by us by way of his camcorder. His messages serve no deeper purpose within the game itself. Only the story of the game that is itself most interested not in the fiction of Inscription, but the fiction of Luke Carter. So the whole time I was playing this game, this difference kept sticking out in my mind and, and just wouldn't leave me alone. Until I remembered. Or maybe I read about it after the fact, I honestly can't remember how this re-entered my awareness. That in the ending of the game, there is a flash of a character that will be familiar to anyone who has played the Hex. Sado, one of the main adversaries in the Hex, and arguably its main villain, is shown flashing over top of the face of Luke's eventual assassin, Amanda, either existing in the camera that is recording the scene, or somehow in what this game refers to as the real world, which is kind of a huge moment in the context of the plot of Inscription, and by extension the other two games, and all of the thematic deconstruction I just finished laying out in the video proper. I don't want to get too into the weeds of the plot that seems to exist between Mullins' games so far. At best, it is currently incomplete, and the meaning of a lot of the stuff will need to be revealed as this series continues, and I hope it does. I love mysteriously interconnected stuff like this. When I finally put together who the Blue Man and what the Magic Triangle were supposed to be, there was that shot of, oh my goodness, that I love getting out of this kind of thing. Sado, having been able to escape the games she appears in at the end of the Hex, puts this series into kind of a strange context, essentially shoving the reality of the series down a layer. 
making the real world of these games distinct from the real world, like this one. Basically, it's the game acknowledging that Luke's video footage has no in-fiction reason to be packaged with this piece of software we just bought from whatever service we just bought it from. When you reach the end of the ARG and you see that P03, as the stoat, manages to successfully upload the game to the internet from Luke's computer despite our best efforts, even if Amanda or Sato is the one who enters the situation at the end and makes that possible, there's no reason the game should have Luke's clips attached to it. No reason for Sato to attach them. The state that Inscription exists in is therefore more of a found footage experience, like we found Luke's camera in a pawn shop or something and this is what was still on the memory card inside. Reality has shifted to put us into an omniscient observer role, if you will. Though the dedication to it being a full-on found footage experience is low on the priority list, as it only takes a little bit of googling to see that none of the card games Luke mentions actually exist, and it's not hard to find Luke's actor Kevin Saxby streaming himself on Twitch playing Inscription. VZ, I love you too. I love everyone. Aw, okay? thanks Kevin. So instead of this being a mysterious and maybe possibly who knows dangerous bit of software I just downloaded from Steam, it's more of a really cool game with layers of fiction that begin in and end with my monitor screen. Blue Mage! Now, all of that said, with the hex being about how much an artist by definition brings to the practice of making art, it makes some pretty strong statements about audience, kind of just as a concept. It frequently frames the player of a game as something of a corrupting influence, something that the game isn't cagey about. The narrator of the final chapter of the game calls out people like players and modders pretty directly. Sado as a corrupting influence on the game of the Hex, and being able to move between games like as her main thing, makes her into a pretty solid analog for the concept of a player, as in someone who plays many games, who enters a framework, engages with it for a time, gets what they need from it, and then moves on, whatever that ends up looking like. It might be an incomplete experience. It might be a corruption of the artist's original intention or vision. But in the end, Sado's only in it for Sado, which is where this game's recurring motif of bad reviews and creative conflicts comes from. It depicts a two-way street, and one of those ways isn't maintained to the same level. Every time that relationship starts, it has to end and it will only go as far as the player is willing to take it. Regardless of what the player is getting out of it, the experience is necessarily going to end when they make their exit. An audience gets to essentially end a piece of art, be it getting to the credit roll of a movie, finishing a video game, hearing the last fade out on an album, or looking away from a painting, or deciding that they're just done before any of those things happen. Taking their impressions, feelings, and interpretations at that point out with them into the world. World. Sato showing up here and killing Luke, finishing the game, rolling the credits is a really cool little detail in light of the idea of her being a stand-in for the audience and Luke being the major fulcrum on which this game is perched. It's brutal, it's not pretty, but that's how the relationship ends, with the audience finishing or just declaring that the experience ends, with nothing more of the framework or artistry being interpreted and therefore processed into existence in any meaningful way. So yeah, it's a pretty good hook for a reader response interpretation of the game, which if you haven't already picked up on, is something that I am likely to look for, with reader response theory being the main thing that I base a lot of my critical thinking in media on. So the Luke barrier, as I've been thinking about it, remains intact, but Sado showing up in the way she does puts to rest a lot of the confusion I had about whether or not the games were speaking to me when Pony Island and the Hex look you in the eye and tell you how true all of this was. But here, the game, and by extension the series, seems to be acknowledging that the reality of this series begins and ends with Luke's camera, or somewhere around that level, and that all of these games exist under that umbrella of reality. 
Though, for posterity's sake, I do want to make it known that on Friday, April 15th, 2022, pretty far into post-production on the main inscription video, I did open the project to find that the video, such as it existed at that point, had been deleted from an otherwise perfectly functioning project file. And it was a rough weekend, but we can probably chalk this up to some sort of select all human error on my part, right? Right? Sato showing up here, killing Luke, ending the game, to me adds another layer of thematic significance to this game while also establishing the rules of this universe, if you will. It is also distinctly possible that I am overthinking this way too much and I should probably just sit tight for the next game and see what it has to say for itself. Oh boy, okay. So that's it. That's the last of the little tangents this game is going to take me on. I, I have no idea if that's true. No promises if it will or, or won't. All I know is I'm putting a lid on this one and I'm going to not think about Inscription for a while. <laughs> it's been five months since I started writing the script for this video. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and congrats if you found the video before it went public. So there you go. I hope it was a good time and I hope you have a good whatever time you're watching this video at and I'll see you in the next one. Also, I couldn't help but notice while I was typing all of this out that the the term old data it, is it appears in the game looks like a face like the two D's are our eyes and the underscore is a mouth and I will be very disappointed if future games in, in the Mullins series uh, doesn't have the words old data come to life and start talking to you like a character. I, I would really like that to happen, even though it would be a, a really dumb idea. Because <laughs> it's me that came up with it.